To access the Advanced Administrator exam guide for Salesforce, you would go to trailhead.salesforce.com and then under the Credentials dropdown, click on Certifications. And it's there that you'll land on the Salesforce Administrator role section. And then down below, you'll find the Advanced Administrator link. Click on that. And then the first link on this page is to get the exam guide. So I'll provide a link to the exam guide down below as well. Now for the exam guide, the main point that I want to mention before we get into the exam outline would be the section about the exam. So the advanced administrator exam has 60 multiple choice, multiple select questions, and then there's five non-scored questions. They always tell you as well how many answers to select whenever it's a multi-select question. And then the time allotted is 105 minutes, passing score 65%, and then the registration fee and retake fee you see here. As well, there are no hard copy or online materials allowed, and you have options of either on-site or online proctored exam meaning that someone is watching you take the test and there's no outside resources you can use. Now, one thing to highlight is that there is a prerequisite for the advanced administrator certification. and That would be the Salesforce certified administrator credential. So you have to attain that credential first before you can go for the advanced administrator. Scrolling down below, the recommended training and references, Salesforce provides their own trail mix as well as several super badges that will help you study towards the advanced administrator certification as well as their own paid courses, which run between four to $5,000, I believe, and that's for in-person training. And then the exam outline is where you'll find the different knowledge areas. That's each of these percentage weighted sections here you'll find. And then below each, you can click on them to find the learning objectives. These would be individual learning objectives, each bullet point. And inside of each learning objective slash bullet point, you'll find multiple topics. So even though this would be considered one learning objective, there's a lot of different topics that you need to master in order to do well on the exam. And so just as an example, I'm not going to read all of these learning objectives, but the first one reads that given a scenario, determine the implications to record and field data access that would include sharing model, controlled by parent, grant access by hierarchies, dashboard and report folder access, email folder access, and territory management. That would contain a lot of different topics that you would need to understand in the context of these scenario-based questions. That would be just to satisfy this first learning objective. Now you'll find as well that they start to get into other security and access related items such as custom profiles and permission sets and delegated administration as well as user authentication and then as well complex business model capabilities such as person accounts versus regular accounts contacts and relating contacts to multiple accounts. Now once you've dealt with the core underpinnings of security and access, you start to get into considerations around the object model and applications inside of Salesforce, inside the objects and applications knowledge area. So there's only two learning objectives in the objects and applications knowledge area, but there's a lot of different topics contained therein as far as providing appropriate solutions to enhance or extend objects, such as different relationship fields, such as master detail, lookup, and as well junction objects that would be many-to-many -many relationship via a junction object. That's an object that has two master detail relationships on it. And as well related list, record type, schema builder, and object creator. And then the second learning objective here is going into how to enhance or extend the user interface, user experience with applications. That'd be by way of the app manager, the lightning app builder, as well as dynamic forms, which really should be called dynamic pages in my humble opinion, as well as standard lightning page components, the console and lightning page analyze button. Now I do have some videos related to things such as the analyze button on lightning pages. So you can always look for my other videos uh, in my YouTube channel as well if you want to learn more about that. And that's the library of videos that's growing all the time. So you might find some of these topics there in addition to my course material. Now, the next knowledge area has to do with the auditing and monitoring of Salesforce items. And that's 10% waiting at the time of this recording. And you will need to be able to determine the appropriate tools for monitoring and troubleshooting the system activity, such as using the debug log and the setup audit trail, which for whatever reason is called view setup audit trail and inside of the setup menu. And I think that link just means, hey, do you want to view the setup audit 
trail. It's confusing wording, but anyway. And then explaining how to ensure sensitive data is set up to support a business, legal, or compliance use case in production and sandbox environment. So we're getting into not only auditing and monitoring, but when you're starting to talk about sandbox environments, it has to do with deployment as well. It's a little hint of deployment concerns in this knowledge area, as well as troubleshooting security settings, including pending updates that may change system access. Now we still have four more knowledge areas here, cloud applications. This is a newer knowledge area for this exam. And I think there might be a typo here. I think this should be sales process instead of cell process, but you'll need to be concerned with as it relates to cloud applications, things such as related to sales, products, price books, and then the scheduling, as well as orders and quotes. And then we also have a couple of different management pieces around forecasting management and territory management, as well as Salesforce knowledge. Now, knowledge was something that was in the regular admin exam. They've peeled that out of the admin exam and they've put it in the advanced admin because not every org uses the Salesforce knowledge. And so the advanced admin certification that we're looking at here We'll be delving into knowledge and in article record types and data categories, as well as the entitlement process. That's getting more into the support side of things and what companies and customers are entitled to, how to set up the entitlement process. You also find things around entitlements in the service cloud consultant exam. Then we're getting into more interactive features and support between agents and customers, such as chat and as well the case feed, service cloud console, experience cloud sites, which formerly was community cloud sites, which was formerly portal sites. But for now, they're calling it experience or digital experience. I'm sure they'll call it something else here in about six months. But for now, it's the experience cloud sites. And then finally, omni-channel, and that is represented on the exam. That's also can be found on the service cloud consultant exam as well. So the top half here is more sales cloud related. Bottom half of this cloud applications has to do with service and then finally given a scenario understand the standard salesforce suite of products that enable extending the core platform and so i think that's incredibly vague to me but i think this just has to do with the standard suite of products would be sales cloud service cloud how can you extend that in order to extend the core platform. And if you have any insights on what this is hinting at, do tell in the comments down below. Now, data and analytics management, this is kind of similar to the admin exam guide. They've also in the advanced admin combined data management and analytics management into one knowledge area. So you'll find the first learning objectives more related to data management. This would be tools in order to improve and enrich data quality, such as data types, validation, rules, I presume, managing duplicates, so that would be duplicate and matching rules, and then enriching and archiving. So I'd love to know more about enriching data on the Salesforce platform. And then you get into the analytics management things. It makes sense that they're combining these. I don't have too much of a qualm with those being combined because before you can have analytics, you've got to have the underlying and underpinning data and you want that data to be enriched, of course. And I think what they're getting at is that it's really accurate information, that it's adding value is what they're getting at with that term enriched. But then we get into the analytics side of things and you're getting into custom report types and reporting snapshots and then concepts around complex charting and custom summary formulas, bucketing, joined reports, cross filters, dynamic dashboards and dashboard filters. And then we're getting back into some more data side of the management considerations. As far as backing up and restoring and archiving on the Salesforce platform and getting into concepts such as big objects and data warehousing, which aren't really on the admin exam, but more here on the advanced admin side of things. And then as well, external objects, data lakes, and no, that's not somewhere that you go fishing and third-party solutions as well as Salesforce Connect, and then data import wizard, data loader, and how to use external ID tools and methods around importing data in Salesforce. So they kind of have interspersed analytics and data management across these different learning objectives here. Now, environment management and deployment, it was hinted at earlier, some things around deployment, but you'll find that again here in this particular knowledge area, and that's where you're getting into change sets, sandboxes, app exchange, as far as managed and unmanaged packages, and then as well, capabilities and best practices for using change sets to move metadata between environments. Remember, metadata is data about data. That would be the objects, fields, that sort of concern, not individual records. And the final piece is process automation, and this is where the data that you have 
now that it's been managed and analyzed and deployed, then process automation is where I like to call it data in motion, where things can be updated and you need to be able to solution and identify the best tool or combination of tools to solve business problems. You'll notice the term scenario. Often, most of the questions are scenario based on the exam. You'll need to be able to identify the appropriate tool or method for troubleshooting, declarative automation, declarative, anytime you see that, that means clicks instead of code. And the declarative automation tools would be workflow rules, process builder, flow, and approval processes at the time of this recording. As well, you'll need to know the capabilities and limitations of each of those declarative automation tools. And then finally, understanding the implications of the order of execution when using automation tools. All right, so you'll finalize things with some of the code of conduct here in the exam guide and then the maintenance information as far as how to maintain your credentials. So that is the advanced administrator exam guide found under certifications inside of Trailhead. You'll find that in the Salesforce administrator section under advanced administrator. So if you found this video helpful, please do like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below for what you would like to learn in Salesforce and I just might make it my next video. And until then, I'll see you in the cloud.